Are you ready for some high adventure? Coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. This is Tom McNally wading through the end of October 2017 and today I bring you the second act of our live performance of the Saga of the European King that happened at Onca Gallery in Brighton on October the 6th. If you haven't seen the first act of the show then you should watch that before watching this one as in our culture first acts come before second acts. The title of this act is The Boss Battle Where Men Meet Themselves. Now, we left the story off for an interval so that we could process all of the emotions that came up in the first act. The King of Europe had marched on Washington, D.C. with the intent to overthrow the President of the United States of America. The King's ex-wife, meanwhile, had taken control of the United States military to help her gain custody over their children. Remember that the King still thought that their son had died in a shipwreck, although really he was fine and with the King's friends who had all followed him there to the United States, right into Washington, D.C., and they all missed him terribly. The King's friends were having a big reunion on the lawn of the White Roost, when suddenly... The White Roost just exploded! Is that the King being flung towards us? He's going to land right here in front of us. Ha, now's my chance. Tell you what, Prince, let's see who gets to him first. Come on, Cutty. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, okay, jeez, okay, okay. All right. Dad, you're okay. Prince, Prince, my son. I miss you. I love you. Oh, my son is alive. Everything makes sense. Everything's in the right place. Juiced up. We might as well make use of it. Let's go and check and see if the king's still going at least. Yeah, you've got to do something with juice. Oh boy, oh no. Oh. Okay, be cool, Francis, be cool. They're all together down there. What? Those insane people I was just talking about. Did, did I summon them? Do I have that power? <laughs> oh man, oh jeez. Be cool, Francis, be cool. What? Oh, we, we're coming, we're coming. Just Took some blows from the dragon. Ooh, yes. But we're tough, and we're on your side, so don't worry. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Old friends, new friends. Eric Ragey, that is mad at me. Meet the help. Uh, it's true. We're helping the king in his big fight. Definitely helping. First ones in, last ones to leave. Totally dedicated. Hello, group of people I'm largely indifferent to. Don't make small talk. Um, now, <clears throat> let's clear the air. I 
I recognize a few of you who killed me when I was a demon, and that's that's fine. <laughs> is is that little Harry Glowfist over there? Bar, I remember you. You were terrifying. Ha! <laughs> I remember every first Wednesday of the month it was New Magazine Day. I had a subscription to Boys Magic. And whenever they printed a new spell, I'd come down to your grotto, I'd unfurl my greasy little magazine, I'd blow your head off. I'll tear his arms off for you if you like, Baal. <laughs> Don't embarrass me, Francis. It's just a work thing. Oh, is that Eric Rage Eater? Wow, there's someone I haven't thought of in a while. Baal, you punk, I like the look. Is that... Cutty, you're waving about. Hello, Cutty. Uh, uh. <laughs> Clock's ticking, your highness. If we wait here, the president will get the drop on us. No, no, wait, this, this is more important. I need to take stock of where everybody's at and then rally them to the climactic battle. Here, here. What's the point of a battle with a big monster if it doesn't dovetail into our own personal journeys? So, some of you already know this, and, and some of you are just catching up, but I spent some time in prison. Uh. Yeah. But when I busted out, I did a terrible thing. I mapped on Axe Axe Wound's new girlfriend, Astrid. It was incredibly awkward. He approached me on the dance floor during a lit track, said several misogynistic things as his dancing technique became erratic and uncoordinated, and then he tried to bite my cheek. It's the worst cheers a man could pull. I was a witness, and every one of my people is ordered to kill this punk on sight. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. I, I deserve that. I, I broke rule one of Europe. I was all huffed up on medicine, but I know that's not good enough. And that's why I'm on this redemption quest to beat up the President of the United States. Oh, yes, that should put things right. Why is that? Pardon? I don't see the cause and effect. How does the king taking over the United States make up for what he did to me? Well, he broke the most sacred rule of Europe. But I'm not wanting him to aggress a neighboring country. Yes, but Europe does want him to do that. Surely an apology is in order first. No, my crime is so great that we are beyond apologies. Well, yes, I'd also like to see you banned from that dance hall, and a donation to a charity of my choice would be appropriate. Well, well okay, yeah, but I kind of started this thing already. Um, <laughs> but anyway, what, what about you other guys? Uh, Axe, Axe, uh, are, are you okay? Uh, oh, uh, I... Are you sure? I mean, you, you were pretty angry with me last time we met. Oh, yeah, but I mean... Are we, uh... Are we gonna be fine? I'd like that, yeah. Okay, so what, what have you been up to? Have you grown as a person while I've been away? Well, um... I, I, I got a girlfriend. Yes, he is aware of that, Axe. All right, yeah. yeah anything else? She's great. She's really nice. Well, 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 yeah, but, but, but dating someone doesn't doesn't further your character, Axe. You have to you gotta make decisions. Ooh. Um I, I don't get a lot of screen time. Um I've been doing some running, like jogging. You have to make deeply personal decisions that you can never go back on. Right, well. None have presented themselves. Well, nuts. Better luck next time. Sally, how about you? Uh, I'm okay, thanks. Oh, come now. You look a lot more comfortable in your new role. Oh, sure. I, I like being a necro ninja. Uh, I was able to take something that everybody had seen as a failing, which was me dying all the time. Oh, it's true. I had to bring her back to life every time, cost a fortune. <laughs> oh, we budgeted for it, of course. Thanks. Yeah, that's good to know. Well, I, I turned that experience into a strength. Now I can use the mechanics of death and dying as a way to keep up with everyone. I can hold my own in a party. I can fight. All I needed to turn my life around and have people respect me for who I am was to take on the characteristics of those who marginalised me. Sally, that is so spot on that I hereby declare you the wisest woman in the kingdom. <laughs> oh, I... I wouldn't say that. Don't have to, I said it. Figaro! <laughs> Write Sally up some fresh leatherheads when we get home. Wisest woman in the kingdom. Anyway, how are you doing, 
Figaro. Oh, all the better for seeing you again, Your Highness. Gosh, what an adventure this is. Ah, oh, it's good to see you too, but tell me about you. Oh, not much to say. It's been a few years, hasn't it? But I've had lots of those. I became a sort of intestinal cowboy, and I've stopped drinking so much. Perfect! See? That's what I'm talking about, Axe. Clear progress. Right. Um, Your Highness, while I have your attention, I really must draw it towards, um... <clears throat> to towards what? Yeah. Toward literally where I'm pointing. That's... Chuck Waller spying on us again from the rubble. That beast little... Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Chuck Waller met out in the spooky desert. My position has been compromised. Oh, did you? Did he use his CIA agent tricks on you? I bet he's trying to use subliminal messaging to control our minds right now. No, 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 come on, Father. Chuck Waller's cool, okay? Chuck Waller's cool? He works for the president, that same president you're trying to kill. Chuck Waller had been assigned by the president to spy on the king for the king's entire life. And Chuck Waller had developed an unhealthy attachment to the king and to the king's lifestyle. When they had met out in the spooky Utah desert, they had come to an understanding, and we'll get exactly to what that was in just a second. Chuck Waller's cool, okay? Argue, Chuck Waller! I am moving to a more secure position. Look out! Fail to see how no, you'll see. Now come on, Father Figaro, don't be like that. We had an adventure together out in the desert, and we had a fight, you know, and, and I won. But now he's considering a change of heart. Oh, Chuck Waller's considering one. That's right. Will Chuck Waller stick to his loyalties, or at the last second, will he switch sides and help us beat the president? The outcome is totally up in the air, Figaro. Why would you want that? Look, if Chuck Waller was going to help us, why hasn't he done it already? He's not helping, he's just creeping on his tiptoes to a more secure location. Look, look, okay, these things have a structure. Look, why am I bothering? Just go drink out of a puddle. A puddle? Ah! Oh, I have missed you, Your Highness. Chuck Waller went and stood behind a tree in the Rose Garden and made sure that all of his spy gadgets were in good working order. His mind was going a million miles a minute. The king got right back into it. Eric Regita, okay, I know we've got a thing going on and we'll resolve that, but uh, I, I'd just like to, like to talk to Cutty. Ah. Okay, Cutty, are we cool? Oh, yeah. Dad, Dad. Uh, Cutty and I are fighting, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no more than usual. But, Dad, I really need to talk to you. Cutty wants to hang out with Eric Rage Eater more than me. Eric's okay, fine. Dad, I made a friend. Well, well, that's nice, Prince. Friends help you in fights. She was, she was called Joanna. Look, our grace period is over, Your Highness. I don't want to rush this, but the snake is on the move. You can tell me about your friend later, Prince. We've got... She died of smoking too many cigarettes, and I gave her the cigarettes. What? Your Highness, we need to go. No, this is the most important thing! I've missed so many of my son's crucial emotional periods. Tell me, Prince, tell me. Did she take your heart with you when she died? Yes. No! Incoming! The fight that they were ignoring back there caught their attention as the President of the United States of America landed on top of them. Gogo <laughs> Gorilla managed to get the Prince out of the way in the nick of time, but the rest of the team was scattered, and the King's royal instincts kicked in, and he leapt up to rally his troops. Bad move, Mr. President! You just landed on the biggest, most powerful adventure team ever assembled in Europe's history. My friends, let's beat up this dragon! I am Yeah, that's right, Pinecone! You, you flap up in his face and really annoy him! Go Gorilla, uh, jump on his back! On his back? Very well. If I die, tell my wife she owes me 50 bucks. <laughs> Clovis, I want you to throw all your uh, magic at him. <laughs> That's why I keep it around, I suppose. An axe, axe wound. I need you, and I need your axe. We haven't had a chance to hug it out yet, but our squabbles are petty in the shadow of a dragon. What do you say? Um. Now the boy, Eric Regina. What are you doing? Are you up on this action? Ah, Eric's here to help. Got Cutty here in my mighty fist. Okay, so I need you and Cutty to hack away at the snake and to keep it busy while we're up on his head. 
Sally! Hello! Okay, how does your Necro Ninja thing work? It's so interesting, actually. I detach my soul from my body, and then I can apply its force wherever I want it. Okay, okay, can you use it to throw me an axe up onto the president's head? Um, look... I'm... Yeah, well, that's really very simple. I could do much more than that. No, no, you... no, that's fine. You can do this just now. Uh, Bob, do your lightning. Francis, do you get kidding? Valda Figaro, hand out the boobs to keep our anxiety levels low. Axe, darling, you look like you're on the horns of a dilemma. Are you going to make your choice? I'm... I... I'll do what I have to do, Astrid. You will. And you'll do it well. Good boyfriend, go. Go on. Now, Sally, now! Sally Myerfield took out her knife, and she thrust it into her heart and died. Her soul didn't go to heaven or to the graveyard, but instead wrapped itself around that tax wound and the king, lifted them up and dropped them on the neck of the massive writhing president. She brought her soul back down into her body and puppeted it around so that it took a big swig of white sangria that she had in her hip flask. The booze made her right into rain. <sighs> up you go! Got you up on the snake! <sighs> Axe and the king dug their nails into the spaces between the president's scales and clambered up onto his flat, sleek head. Okay, Axe! I'm gonna just punch him in the nose until he's knocked out. Now, you, you hack away at his neck and we'll try and get his head off. Listen, um, I need to talk to you about something. And listen, Axe, all of this is a way to make things up to you. To you, and to Europe, and to everybody. It's not about that, it's about my brother. Axe, can it, can it wait, seriously? I know it's not the best time, but you know it's never the best time. There isn't a good time to bring this up and I've just let it slide and slide. We're on top of a dragon! No, let me do this! I need to make a deeply personal choice that I can't go back on. Yeah, but not right this second! Let me finish! King of Europe, for spilling the blood of Clan Axe Wound, I must invoke the oath I took at my initiation and end your life until you are dead. Axe and the king was fierce and weepy, and it was too raw to look at. Axe put all of his strength into stunning blows, and the king did all he could to defend himself while he struggled to hang on to the president's nostril. Badly burned and a bit chopped up, the king knew that he couldn't just limit the strategy to himself and Axe, and he had to get their mutual friends involved too. Can you blow for us? Can you make Axe fall asleep with magic? He's trying to kill me like he always said he would, but I'm really real this time, Blowfist! But, Colonel Blowfist had been distracted by a different promise of revenge. Sophia Calera's bandit gang had abducted Prince Prince in the confusion. And you'll remember that she's on the orders of the ex-queen, and the ex-queen was not about to leave the United States of America without her son. But Sophia had her own score to settle. Tell you, Sophia, we're in the middle of something here, so put the points down and drop that gun. You don't want this to go badly for you, like most things do. This is the scum who my daughter would sneak off to see, who would pressure her into smoking the cigarettes that destroyed her. Now I take my pound of flesh, and we see how the grief of a parent is spent on the world. Hey, listen, you just need to calm down, all right? <laughs> Have a cigarette. <laughs> They take the edge off! Capro! Sophia Calera unloaded an entire clip into Colonel Blowfist's chest. Now, I'm not an expert in magical armor and deflectors, but if you fire 33 rounds at a large target, you'll eventually hit flesh. Oh, okay. All right, Blowfist down. Lot of blood, that is. Wowzers. No! Father! Father Figaro, come and help me out! Oh, God, no! Colonel, they've got the prince! So help me up, and I'll kill the lot of them with magic. I'll turn them inside out or something. Okay. Sally! Sally, lend a hand here, will you? Oh, uh, I'm kind of busy. Oh, that trick you did with throwing the king. Use it to get me up. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
Sally, please, they're running away with the prince. Everyone's distracted and Glover's our best hope, but he's just too fat. Jeez, oh, fine, it's just oh, kind of overkill. As Sally stabs herself in the heart for the second time in five minutes, the king and Axe Axe wound fell to earth at the side of the president that Eric Rage Eater was currently destroying with Cutty. They picked themselves up and staggered into their brutal, tender fight again, but they caught <coughs> Eric's attention. Who's that left a crater down there? Ah, oh, double axe woundy. Are you trying to ice the king? Ha, <laughs> ah, nice. Well, you're gonna buck him till he drops if the king ain't all strapped in. <laughs> Pardon, you what? Eric Rage Eater then threw Cutty underhanded at the king. No, what are you doing, Eric? The king caught him on pure instinct, and the usual piece of stock animation played as the king held him aloft and lightning struck. I hate this. Here we gizzo! One friend mad at you, another friend mad at you. That's some drama. Enjoy. Eric, you fiends! You weren't here to help us at all! No, I'm only here to twist you, pistol whip you, dip you, then flip you. I got rocks for a heart, and this is how I keep it gangsta. <laughs> now drop mo hits, boys. Yeah! Is Axe gonna kill you? Oh, yes, Axe is gonna try and kill me. Maybe. Because he's the best there is at fighting. Are you enjoying your front row seat, Cathy? Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is just a bit weird. I mean, he's your friend, right? Yes! Oh, I'm his best friend! Well, like this! Oh. Like you've got, like, this hold over your friends. Like, even Bitey the Lion would jump to whenever you send the thing. And, uh, Bitey, let's not forget, he was a maniac. Don't talk about Bitey! He wasn't a maniac! Oh. He was <laughs> Come on, yeah, don't sugarcoat things. These are your final moments on Earth. Uh, I know you thought he was cool because he was a lion and you were ten, uh, but you chose him over me. From the moment you met him, I was trash. Look, Cutty, you came with us on every adventure, okay? <laughs> yeah, not as equals. It was clear what was going on. I mean, don't get me wrong, I completely understand why a lion is more entertaining than a sword. I mean, lions can bite a postman, uh, run into traffic. I mean, come on, though, the guy was a, a wreck. Uh, he was all smacked out, we used to nick everyone's things. No one likes him, uh, except you. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I didn't realise a lot of that at the time. Yeah, who'd have thought children would be such bad judges of character? Look, Mighty was just this funny guy with a funny voice. Oh yeah, I wasn't quite so funny to anyone with a, with a bit of perspective to them. Oh come on, Cutty! Mighty's been- Oh, jeez, Axe, come on! Mighty's been dead for years! <laughs> Now. Yeah, and for years you never asked me how I felt about it. It was just, oh, the lion's dead, so never mind, let's root around in the toy box and use old Cutty again, will we? Oh, come on, that, that wasn't how it happens, you mister- <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, hang on a moment, am I grokking this? So you had a sword, and then you had a lion, and now you got me? Dude, are you just using my strength as a bear because you're on like a rebound sort of deal? Oh, who's that? No, c come on, Nanook, it it's not like that, okay? Uh, are you a polar bear? Yeah, well, actually, I'm, I'm like, the polar bear. Uh, it's like a bear, but, like, big and, and white. It's, like, off the scale strong. Oh, I like polar bears. I mean, they're not as good as Kodiak bears. <laughs> yeah, like, Kodiak bears are tight. So, are you like a sword? Yeah, uh, they gave me to, to this guy when he was six. Why a sword? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, why, why are you a bear? <laughs> I don't know either, man. <laughs> People were just looking at me and they were like, Whoa, that's a bear. And I was like, Whoa, I'm a bear. Yeah, okay, okay look, there's a lot going on up here on the dragon. <laughs> can, we, can we just do this somewhere else? Oh, oh. Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this conversation. No, 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 look, this isn't a rebound thing. Cunny's just not been very good at communicating. Well, I'm a big believer in, like, clear and honest communication on all levels. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Cutty, I'm sorry I liked Bitey more than you. It was true, okay? But I was just a boy, and I liked childish things. And when I put those things away, I found you again, but I can see now that the damage was long done. Yeah, all right. All right? All right. Can we be friends again? 
Yeah. Do you mean that? Yep. Guys, what I've seen here today is a breakthrough. Whoa, hot dog! Now let's all work together to knock out Axe, and then we can beat this dragon! Yeah, you've already killed him. Uh, hello. Don't mind me. The king pulled Cutty out of Axe Axman's neck and cradled his friend in his arms. Axe, you, you didn't have to do this. Yeah, but I did. I did. Everyone's got their thing. What's my thing? I was just a big guy who couldn't make decisions. That was your thing. Yeah, but not anymore, right? None. Not anymore. I'm the guy got himself off the horns <coughs> of the trickiest dilemma in the world. That's what you are! And I fought like hell to get off those horns. And the world will know you, Axe Axe Wound! The fat guy who did that! <laughs> ah! Axe Axe Wound died there on the lawn of the White Roost. And by this point, it was pretty much just Baal left fighting the dragon. St. Francis had been thrown off somewhere. Gogo Gorilla was still clinging to its back because he'd been instructed to, but he didn't do anything up there. He was just being patient. And Pinecone was nowhere to be seen. Just Baal. Oh, so it's just you and me then, is it? That's okay, I can do that. And you know what, Snake? I've got you right where I want you. Look at me, Baal Haddad, taking on a dragon, one on one again. I've got my lightning sword, I've got my symbolic scythe, not much good for fighting, but I've got it. I'm riding a cloud. Oh boy, it's like the last 5,000 years didn't even happen. Sally Minefield came to from death, just as the king was laying Axe Axe Wound's body down. <gasps> what happened? Axe! His spirit is gone. There's nothing I can do. It has no unfinished business here on Earth. He knew what kind of guy he was. Oh, no. Ha ha! Nothing warms my blood like seeing one homie 86 the other. But not now, Eric! Yes, now. My turn to take a swing at you. Hua! Oh, Josh! Ha! Ah! Eric, stop! No, ah! Oh, Sally, run! I'm warning you. Boom, bam, as I step in the jam. God damn, what are you gonna do about it? Fine. Then I summon the spirit of vengeance that was Garth Minefield! Sally Minefield crushed the necklace trophy that contained the soul of her grandfather. A great glittering light stunned the old Viking lord and the king, but Sally's eyes were accustomed to that kind of light. Mm. Honoured ancestor, your moment of eternity is shattered. I give you now this chance to avenge your wrongful death. Pardon? You must spend whatever remains of yourself in joining me to kill the loathsome man who took you from this uh, world. You have to speak up, young lady. You from here? Uh, we're in a land far from your birth, grandfather. Why? No, that's not important. Uh, you remember Eric Rage Eater? He killed uh, from you. From your uh, accent, I'd say you were from Brussels. Uh, well, yes, I am from Brussels. Uh, where do you live now? Look, we really don't have much time. Eric Rage Eater, yes? He's hurting my friend. Yes, yes. My friend is the king. I know, an and excellent shop in Brussels. If you go in at the end of the day, all the cheese is on discount. Can you actually hear me? Of course I can hear you. After what seemed to be an eternity of torment, Sally persuaded the murdered spirit of her grandfather to lend a little help in undoing his own killer. She showed it where to cut and what to break inside of the Viking Lord's bloated soul. And with surgical precision, they detached Eric Rage Eater's essence from his body before he was able to beat the king into too fine of a pulp. 
Eric Rage Eater's body collapse under its own tragic ancient weight. And the most evil man in the world was simply removed from existence without a word. His sudden absence caused a vacuum that was filled with such force that everybody nearby was flung like ragdolls across the Rose Garden. The President of the United States and Baal absorbed the brunt of the shockwave. The President was kind of winded, but Baal's flying cloud was evaporated away. He dropped his symbolic weapon, no good in a fight, and his body was mangled beyond recognition. <laughs> Meanwhile, Colonel Glofus, the powerful archmage, the wisest man in the kingdom, was lumbering in hot pursuit of Sophia Calera's bandit gang. But the pursuits came to an abrupt end when he got his leg caught in a bear trap. The bandits had left that trap there to trap him. Oh, wow! Oh, wow, okay! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Come on, Glover! Come on now! Oh my god! Oh, oh. Come on! Okay, just breathe! Breathe! You know, a million spells to get you out of this one, Glover! Million spells! <laughs> oh my god! Okay! Oh, oh my god, I know that theme tune! That's Pinecone theme tune! Oh, Pinecone! Oh my god, fight gone out of you! I saw a bird! You saw, saw a bird? But yes, yes, of course, you did. Good, good, Pinecone! Good, good, come here, Pinecone! Pinecone! Yes, Pinecone! Yes, come here! Help me, Pinecone! They said trapped, Pinecone! Trapped! They're gonna trap her with them! Oh, they got my legs, Pinecone! Oh, come on, Lopez! They got me, they really did! Oh, can you, I'm losing blood! Pinecone, can you help me, Pinecone? You got your worm! No, Pinecone! Oh, stay conscious! Come on, Glofus! Haven't got a worm! You got your worm! Oh, yes! Oh, that's, that's my leg, Pinecone! Yes! You can help! Come on! Spring the trap, Pinecone! Come on! Come on, you can do it! You can! No, no, right here, Pinecon! Pick! Not that! No! No, Pinecon! No! No! So much for Colonel Glowfist, the wisest man of the kingdom. <laughs> Baal was down, Axaxu and Generic Rage were dead, and it was a bad time to really be any of Josh's characters. Uh, <laughs> St. Francis was still missing, off in a puddle, and Father Figaro was the only one left to help the king up against the president, who was still coming down on them. Um, there is still a fight going on, your highness. Ah, no! At the very ah. least, you can die on your feet. Look, take a swig of that, and there you go. Ah. Back straight, face on, here he comes. The president of the United States of America arced his neck up to bring the weight of the sky down on the king's skull. And then the shots rang out. <laughs> science fiction shots. And the president slumped sideways, coiling down into a shuddering reptilian pool, with Go Go Gorilla floating on top of it. What was that? Well, best guess is that it was our man on the inside coming through, Chuck Walla, the CIA spy. Chuck Walla! Ah, uh, I have shot my boss. Chuck Walla! I told you he would come around! He's, he's got all these cool spy gadgets, give me your own. <sighs> Dragons are susceptible to ball plasma discharge, the kind that is fired by the ball lightning gun. I was assigned as a cool spy gadget. Its mechanism is fascinating, and but we shall discuss it at a more suitable time. Yes! Yes, my god, we have work to do! Your ex ball and chain, she's taken an army with her and she's headed back to Europe. This time we're all gonna follow her together. Chakwala, give me the cool spy gadget gun. I will execute the president. I'll run triage. Everybody's hurt and, oh God, Axe. Where's Astrid? We must give him a proper burial at oh, once. Oh, he deserves that. He deserves that at the least. When we return to Europe, when we rescue my son and we thwart the invasion, 
I will mount his axe in the living rock of the border mountains, which will stand as a monument to all the axe wounds that have fallen to the expansionist policies of the sons of Europe. Yeah, about that expansion of yours. Oh, it was Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a pretty thing. You put it in. Back to buy up the rubble, Will Smith. Um, I brought him here, Figaro. I have heard of this man. When revolution is spoken, his is the name that follows. Will Smith, the last of the fresh kings. <laughs> yeah, I prefer Will Smith. Uh, pleased to finally meet you, Your Highness. We don't often have royalty come to visit, but perhaps maybe you can see why that is. You wish to take this land that is rightfully yours. Now that your all opponents are defeated, I offer no resistance. I must attend to my family and put my own house in order. Here, take this cool spy gadget gun and claim your birthright. Why, thank you. I accept your kind offer of my country. And as first order as the new improved fresh king, I give it back to the president of the United States. Look at him sleeping so peaceful. Never see him relax like that again. Here, I'll take the gun back. You'd abdicate your responsibility so lightly. Well, um, things don't quite work the same way here. Man, you never figured out that maybe being the top of the hill is the best place to make the worst enemies? Look at what you've done to DC. That's what I'd have to deal with if I was president, and the pay would be lousy. Scaly there, he can keep the job. Now everyone, go and clear all out of here. I'm bringing in the world's largest field hospital to help the president through his period of ill health. So, do, do, do we leave as, uh, as friends or, or foes, Will Smith? Well, that depends on how good you're going to be for business. Right now, I seem to have misplaced a certain whale of a client, one Mr. Lord Rage Eater, and it's going to be a big free-for-all warlord jamboree down south there for years now. Got to clean that up, stabilize the market, you know? But then, darndest thing, I've also lost about all the senators and congressmen and members of the Supreme Court who just would not get on my payroll. See, I uh, left them all around here somewhere. I bet something's going to turn up. You know, it always does, usually holding a lot of fat contracts for reconstruction and security. So uh, I say we're about even for now. King, go see your boy, and then we'll see later on if we can help each other out. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna go to a war. Yeah, that's beautiful. We'll talk, do lunch, everything. Go on, scoot. Will Smith's in the capital, everybody. Let's make some money. Oh. Over on the other side of the White Roost, St. Francis had found the remains of Baal, and he was sticking them back together as best he could. Gods are simpler organisms than this, so it's a Baal was gonna be fine. Oh, did, did we win? I don't know. Something's happened. The fighting stopped. Looks like everyone's talking. We fought a dragon, Francis. And we triumphed. Mm, the whole thing was a waste of time, if you ask me. It was like the old days again, when I fought the sea. No, it wasn't. The old days didn't happen. They just told us that they happened and we believed them. You're right. I need to... I need to get over myself. Baal, today really happened. You really did fight a dragon this time, Baal. Baal, the great storm god, not a wage slave, not a mini-boss in a grotto for the kids. You were an actual hero today. You didn't just think you were. You were. I was. We get a happy ending, Francis. <sighs> well, we probably could have boosted your self-esteem without quite so high a body count. But everyone dies, so... Francis, why did you fight the dragon? Well, I don't know. Why wouldn't I? Well, you didn't have to. You say that the old stories are just stories and you're not on a contract like me. You don't have anyone breathing down your neck threatening you with disciplinary action if you act the way you want to. Yeah, but I've got you, Baal. And that'll do for now. So if I'm shipping off back to Europe, will, will you come with me? Mm, I walk by myself. All places are alike to me. But with you, at least every once in a while I get to see something I never thought I would. Like an obese wizard having his leg pecked off by a giant bird. 
Did that really happen? Oh boy, did it. With the president defeated but not deposed, the king at last gave up on his revolution and he turned his full attention to saving Europe from the invasion fleet that his ex-wife had launched against it and maybe putting things right with his kids again. So they gathered up Colonel Glopist, who had blacked out from the pain, and hurried to the National Harbour, where the Potomac met the sea. And they were too late, of course. They could just make out the boats of the invasion fleet as they sailed over the horizon towards Europe. They were exhausted and spent. And the king took his oldest friend, Cutty the Sword, and brooded heavily on the pier. <coughs> There have been so many emotions today, Cutty. I, I conquered a nation, but I don't own it now. I got my son back, and my son was taken. And my ex was there, and... Oh. Yeah, so she's got the, the one kid, and she's going all the way to get your daughter, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I need to sink every ship in that armada, but, but I'm really tired. Yeah, and uh, by the way, Astrid's coming. Astrid! Oh no, Cuddy, Cuddy, look casual! Look casual! Yeah, she wants to kill you uh, as well, right? Because you did stick me into Axe's neck. Don't, don't bring that up. Astrid, hello! European king! What a nice night! Uh, what's that you've got there? This is the body of Axe Axe Wound, my boyfriend, which I have mummified for ease of transportation. Oh! Oh, wow, yeah, look, okay, look, I'm sorry about Axe, Cuddy, um, went into, uh, th th there were a lot of emotions today. I would be saying so. I, for one, am distraught that my beloved's life was ended on the blade of your sword. Yet, see, Cuddy doesn't respect human life, but, uh, Astrid, uh, Astrid, I, I'm, I'm too tired to fight here, just take, take, take Cuddy. Ah, this is the very sword. Yeah. I, I, I can't take back what I did. Just strike me down. Europe will fall in darkness, split into a million pieces, and I will be known as the last and stupidest of the European kings. This is a demon sword, correct? Uh, is your name Cutty? Yeah, all right. Hmm. I have colleagues who recently published a fascinating paper on a demon sword excavated in Peru. It was able to produce an entirely novel form of venom, able to cause brain death in a llama model in only modest doses. Um, what's, what's that, Yuri? Is, is that Axe's heart that you're eating? Yes. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, I've seen this. This is, this is, this is Vikinka morning. We do not do the mourning as you do in Europe. My darling Axe died in a glorious battle with a worthy foe among the best of the Vikings. He will be feasting tonight in Viking heaven while I feast on his courage. So, so you didn't come, you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to avenge him. You are too foolish. I have no time for blood oaths and such nonsense. Axe made his decision. And it was his. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not, not just for acts, but I, you, you know, I broke rule one. Rule one is meaningless to me. I'm, okay, Astrid, I'm sorry I said weird things to you and I was gross, but, and, oh, I, and I'm sorry I bit you. Yes, it was not cool. I, I, I don't, I don't want to act that way. <laughs> Good. You can be going some way to making it up to me by lending your resources to my studies. Oh, because when Sally destroyed the soul of Eric Rajita, your source of funding was stopped. Jeez, oh, I'm sorry for that one too. This is, as they say, a ball ache. But I am offering a solution. I'm in a crowded field. I need to diversify my publications list. And you have an open spot on the adventure team, do you not? So you, you want to come with us and study Europe? If you'd offer the funding as a way of apologizing for the slaying of my darling with your demon sword, I'll have the proposals drawn up for you by morning. I have some ideas also on how to rescue your child. Oh, my boy! Oh, no! You should have avenged Axe and saved me from that pain of our separation! Oh, quiet now. What 
is that in the sky? <gasps> it's me, Piney Cone. It is Piney Cone. Oh God, Piney Cone has come to lift my spirits like he always. Whoa, whoa, watch out! Whoa. What is this that the bird has dropped? P Piney Cone, you shouldn't drop things. And uh, I need to tell you off for eating kind of locust foot. But that was bad, Piney Cone. Don't do that. But, uh, I'm just. What's in the bundle, Piney Cone? It's moving! Oh, Piney Cone, what, what, what's that? Dad? <gasps> my son! Piney Cone brought me my son! We fought the dragon and we won! And my son has returned! Hmm. My ideas for your son's rescue were more elegant, but this is a positive outcome, I agree. Everything is gonna be all right! We conquered, and we won! Hear me, Europe, from across the seas! I give to you the greatest gift I have known. My boy, healthy and strong and well, he will be the wisest and most merciful and cleverest of the European kings that the world has ever seen. <laughs> that would turn out to not be the case. Now far away from the troubles of mortals over land and contracts and airs, the spirit that had once inhabited Axe Actuin's body approached the river that everyone will cross. Why well, is uh, this what I get the ferry then? Yeah, sure, bro. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I like this. It's, it's proper traditional, you know. Where are you going to, huh? Huh? Where are you going? What? Where are you headed, man? Don't mess me around. It's a simple question, yeah? Uh, it's, uh, what are my options? Oh, jeez, man. You gotta open your eyes. Look, you gotta get on the level with the program, you know what I'm saying? Now, you've got Viking heaven, yeah, because you went down fighting, yeah. I respect that. That's how I went, yeah. I went crazy, I went nuts, yeah. But then it says on your passport that you're European, so, like, that's just heaven. Yeah, I know you. It's, it's bitey, right? You're bitey the lion. I've heard all about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We've heard all about each other. Yeah, amazing, wonderful. Yeah, I saw you on the TV. Wonderful. Yep, great, fine. Sorry, I just, I can't get over it. I'm just a bit starstruck, you know. You're bitey. Yeah, I know, I know. I was the king's lion once, but now I'm not, okay? And you got to choose where you're going. I've got to choose between heaven and Viking heaven. Yeah, man, time's up. you got to choose. Which one's better? I don't know, it's like a personal thing, isn't it? It's like cultural, it's like national anthems and what's your favorite arm, yeah? Vikings have got all the feasts and food all the time. They got fights, big fights, mm, lots of fights. Oh, I like that, that sounds great. And heaven has got like friends, family, happy so, stuff. So my brother and everyone is up in heaven. Uh -huh. But Astrid's gonna end up in Viking heaven. What, what? Who's Astrid? What are you talking about? You gotta choose. You have me on, you're pulling my chain. We haven't gone all day, man. No, this boat is hot. No, I'm ready to go. You, you understand listen, what I'm saying? Let me just, just wee things up for a little bit. Just. Okay. Mm. Sure. Take your time. Heaven. Viking heaven. Viking heaven. Heaven. Hey. Hey, man. But then. Hey! Heaven. <laughs> or Viking heaven. Heaven. I'm still here. Just let me think it through. This is a proper dilemma. Heaven. Or Viking heaven. I'm gonna go without you. No, shh, 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 shh. Find more events there. We've got questionnaires. You can tell us what you think. 
Uh, and as I said, there's a table box for the other book. We've got some burgers. <laughs> um, absolutely, I would just like to also say the one person who is responsible for the, what was that, seven hours of your evening <laughs> that you just spent uh, was Tom McNally. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who came to be in the audience that night. It meant a lot to us and we're hoping to do some more of these live shows soon. Now, you at home can support us too. You can donate to the show's Patreon, write us a review or give us a rating on iTunes, drop us a line on Facebook or just get in touch however to tell us what you think. Please, we'd really like to know. Chapters 31 and 32 of the show will be coming soon. That ends off book two. We then will have an epilogue. There'll then be something quite special and then there'll be a break and book three will begin in early 2018. Stay tuned. classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre, and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!